Good morning and a warm welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Annie Tenkrian and I'm a corporate paralegal at Twifte & Co. and I will be moderating today's webinar session. This webinar will discuss about the regulations related to domestic workers and employees regulated by the labor law and will be presented by our litigation associates, Mahmoud Ahmad and Hassan Rabia. Please be aware that we will be holding a 10 minute Q&A session to answer any queries sent by the attendees at the end of today's presentation. In order for the attendees to ask their questions, you should see an icon in the shape of a question mark at the top right corner of your screen. And when you click that icon, the Q&A chat will open and you may submit your questions there. Please note that the question box will be accessible during the presentation. However, the questions will only be published and answered during our Q&A segment. Moreover, depending on how many questions we receive, we will aim our best to, uh, to respond to as many of your queries as we can within the time frame for the Q&A section. So without further delay, if I may pass the screen on to Mahmoud Ahmad. Hello, good morning everyone and uh, thank you again for attending this webinar. Um, I believe it's uh, one of the most important uh, uh, subjects uh, uh, regarding the labor law. Most of us uh, either employee or employer and uh, it's important to know your right and the obligations uh, not only for lawyer but for everyone. Uh, when we are starting speaking about the uh, labor law, that's mean the federal law number 8 for 1980 and its amendment. Uh, this law is applied for all the employee and employee uh, of the private sector. Uh, can we start uh, the first slide for the definition? So. Uh, uh, all the business operated in the private sector are governed by the labor law. Um, the exceptions is some of the uh, uh, free zone authorities, uh, but the free zone regulation are supplement the law, uh, not replace the law. But the execution will be mentioned in the next slide. Um, yes, the executions is there is some free zone authorities like uh, Dubai Financial Center and Abu Dhabi uh, uh, General Market. They have their own law and they have their own courts. So the labor law does not apply on this free zone uh, uh, authorities. Also, there is some executions from this law, which is the law not applied to this employee who are working on the federal authorities and the government, member of state, uh, public entities, and of course the domestic servants law, workers, which my colleague Hassan will speak about them, some of farmers, member of army force and police. Um, so let's move to the other slide about the types of the contract. The Ministry of Human Resource and uh, Emeritization uh, issued the Ministerial Decree number 764 of 2015, which is determined two types of the employment contracts. Unlimited uh, uh, period contract and the limited period contract. So there are, this are only two types of contracts. Um, of course, the, the, the limited period contract is uh, uh, like uh, when the employee and the employee agree for uh, two years uh, contract period or something like this. And the other, the, the, the limited terms contract, uh, uh, the unlimited terms contract who does not determine any uh, period for the contract. If we can move to the next slide, we will speak about the uh, probation period. The probation period is uh, 
maximum can be six months. Of course, both employee and employers can uh, agree for a shorter notice period, like one month, two months, three months, but the maximum probation period will be up to six months. The most important things in the in this period that the employee can terminate the employee without any further notice and the employee will not be entitled to any of end of service gratuity or uh, uh, any entitlement. So I know that we are not covering all the, 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 the labor law points, but at least in this webinar, we will focus in the most important uh, uh, regulation and articles in the labor law. In the next slide, we will speak about the working hours. The working hours as per article number 65 of the labor law stating that the maximum working hours is eight hours excluding one hour break. So, but uh, the Ministry of Human Resources and uh, Immortalization uh, can apply some decrees to uh, uh, make this working hours up to nine hours per day uh, for some specific jobs like uh, the employee of the hotels or uh, security and some other kind of type of uh, employees. Um, in the next slide, we will speak on the annual leaves and public holidays. There is two uh, uh, ways to calculate your annual leaves uh, in, in your employment period. If you're of course, in the first six months, you are not entitled to have any annual leaves because you will be on the uh, uh, probation period. So after six months, if your employment period did not exceed one month, one year, sorry, uh, then your annual leave will be two calendar days per month. If your uh, uh, employment period uh, more than one year, then you will uh, deserve 30 calendar days. Uh, 30 calendar days, uh, if we move to the next slide, most probably this 30 calendar days equivalent 20 working days. Uh, of course, if we will move to the, 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 the public holidays, all the employee in the private sector entitled to uh, public holidays. Uh, in the UAE, the, the public holidays is approximately 10, den, 10 days by year, per year. So the most important point, if we move to the next slide, uh, we will speak about the end of service gratitude. Uh, it's a little bit complicated calculation, but most of us should know our uh, uh, rights, how we can, can calculate our end of service gratuity. The first thing, if you did not complete one year, so there is no end of service gratuity. If you have completed more than one year, so your end of service gratuity can be calculated. Uh, of course, we are talking about uh, uh, the employee, but not uh, uh, UAE citizen, because UAE citizen are uh, uh, applied to uh, a pension type of, uh, of payment and some of the GCC also national, uh, uh, the pension type uh, of payment applied to them. So uh, if we move to the next slide, 
we will see on the right uh, uh, the calculation. How many uh, end of service gratuity you are entitled to? The first thing you will be entitled to 20 days basic salary. So uh, uh, the basic salary is uh, uh, your uh, salary, uh, which mentioned in the uh, labor contract, and uh, uh, this uh, excluding uh, the other uh, uh, entitlement. So uh, you will be entitled to 21 days for each year. Uh, of the first five years of, of, of your employment period and 30 days for each year of service in the respect of each year after the five year, which means if I am now, uh, uh, my employment period is uh, six years. How can I calculate my end of service? Yes, in the beginning you will be entitled to 21 uh, uh, days uh, uh, in the first five years and the remain one uh, year, which is year number six of your employment period, you will uh, be entitled to 30 days. Uh, that's it. And the end of service gratuity is uh, uh, capped at two years basic, basic salary, which means uh, if you are uh, employment period is 20 years uh, in the company and the end of service calculation exceeded two years from the basic salary you you deserve no you this is the maximum amount of end of service is two years from your basic salary and uh, uh, let's move to the next slide Does the, the, the termination of the, the contract affect the end of service calculation? Yes, of course. Uh, first, we should make a difference between the unlimited terms contract and the limited terms contract. Uh, the unlimited terms contract, if any employee resigned, his entitlement to the end of service will be uh, uh, reduced as for uh, by one third where the employee has between one and three years service. So if I, I resign, I will deserve only in, 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 if my employment period from one to three years, I will deserve only seven days not 21 like we previously said. And if I resign, but my employment period between three and five years, I will deserve 14 days end of service. And if my employment period exceeded five years, then I will be entitled to all my uh, uh, end of service gratuity, which mean 21 uh, uh, days for the first five years, and after that, I will be uh, uh, deserve 30 days. Uh, let's move to uh, the next slide. Yes, regarding the limited terms contract. The limited terms contract, uh, if I am trying to resign, from my work uh, period to the expiry of my contract, then uh, I will be obligated to buy a compensation to my company half of my salary for three months or the salary of the remaining contract period whatever is less. Let's say, for example, uh, my contract will be expired or will be come to end on uh, 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 November. And 
on October, I want to resign. So the remaining uh, uh, period of my contract is one month now. If I resigned on October, then I should pay to my company a compensation equivalent one this one month from my salary. Uh, the other uh, condition, if my company terminated me, the company should pay three months from my salary and or uh, the my salary for the uh, uh, remaining contract period, whatever are less as well. So let's say in this example, uh, 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 my contract uh, will be end on November and I want to uh, 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 the company terminated me on uh, on April. So then the company in this uh, uh, condition will pay to me a compensation of three months of my time of my salary. Um, in the next slide. Yes. Uh, no, let's move to the next slide uh, 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 regarding the uh, uh, litigation procedures and the time bar. Uh, it's essential for uh, any employee or employee uh, once uh, uh, there is a dispute between them and uh, they want, they cannot reach an amicable settlement, uh, they should. Uh, 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 file their application before the Ministry of Labour in the beginning. The Ministry of Labour will carry out some investigation and will meet with both parties in order to uh, 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 can reach an amicable settlement. If the Labour Department did not uh, uh, reached any uh, uh, amicable settlement between the parties, the Labour Department should transfer this dispute to the court within two weeks from the date of submitting the application to the Labour Department. Also, the Labour Law mentioned clearly that uh, any dispute or any rights related to uh, uh, the relation between uh, uh, the labor and uh, the employee and the employee will be time barred after one year from the date of their rights, which means that if my company terminated me now and they did not give me my entitlement, I have a period for one year to file my claim. If one year passed from this date and I didn't file any dispute or claim, which means I cannot file it uh, uh, again, which means it's time bought. Also, it's important to, to mention that uh, uh, the discipl disciplinary uh, uh, offense, uh, if uh, my employee uh, did something wrong, and uh, I want to charge him for this act. Uh, I should uh, uh, charge him uh, after 30 days from the date I, it was deserved, which means after if I, I know today that my employee did something wrong, I should uh, charge him within the next 30 days. If the 30 days passed, I can't blame him for the act he did uh, uh, before more than 30 days. Also, if I investigated with my employee regarding some acts and I found him guilty and I can't impose any penalty against him after 60 days from the date of ending the investigation, which means that my employee, I finished the investigation today, I should apply the penalty 
not no later than the next two months or 60 days. After the 60 days, which mean I I, I released this uh, uh, penalty or or I can't apply it on the employee. Um, I think I, I I finished my highlights on the labor law and I can leave uh, uh, my colleague uh, Hassan to speak about the uh, domestic servants law. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. OK, hello, everybody. Welcome again to this webinar. And thank you, my colleague Mahmoud, for your highlighted points on the labor law. In the coming part of this webinar, I will speak about the rights and obligations of the employers and workers as per the domestic workers law. First of all, we need to know the domestic worker law and what are the domestic workers according to the law. The law which we are talking about is the federal law number 10 of 2017, which is formulated by His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed on June 2017, which came to, into force on after two months on August 2017. According to the law, the domestic workers are the national persons performing a domestic services in return of wages for the employees and under for the employers and under his supervision and direction. Uh, the domestic services provided by the domestic uh, worker is the service that rendered to the employer in his place of residence. It's, it's uh, different from the normal workers which are doing their work on offices or something like this. In this type of law, uh, the workers provided their work to the employer on his residence, either permanently or temporary. There are several types of uh, domestic workers defined by the law as per the annexions of the law. They are 19 occupations can be considered as a domestic workers. Some of them as housemates, family drivers, nannies, private coaches, housekeepers, all of these can be considered as uh, domestic workers and their rights will be covered under law number 10 of 2017 aside from the general labor law number 8 of 1980. In the next slide, we will see what are the employment, what is the employment contract and how it looks like. The employment contract, if we move forward to the next slide, we will see the employment contract. There is a, there is a separate format for the work, domestic workers, uh, unified and prepared by the Minister of Human Resources and Immunization, which shall be followed by all employers. Aside from this format, no workers can be considered as a domestic workers unless he signed this type of contracts and this type of contracts is so, uh, considered by the ministry. So, as uh, unlike the normal contracts, the domestic workers contracts consist of uh, four copies. One copy will be with the employer, one copy will be, will be with the worker, the third one will be with the agency, and the fourth one will be with the minister, with the ministry. So unlike the normal contracts, which consist of three copies only, one will be with the employer, one will be with the employee, and one will be with the minister. Here we have a fourth party, which is the agency. The agency providing the services of the domestic workers shall have a copy of, of the contract and there is some regulations and restriction on the agencies on this regard. So each party to the contract shall have a copy 
to be considered in case there is any dispute in the future between the parties. Moving forward, we will see the appropriation period of the domestic workers. Unlike the normal labor law, the domestic workers shall be placed on probation period for six months. Uh, in the normal contracts, which are regulated by the Minister of Human Resources under the labor law, the probation period can be agreed between the parties and it can be varied from one month up to six months. It depends on the agreement between the party. However, here in the domestic workers law, any domestic workers law shall be placed on the probation period up to six months because as per the procedures, uh, the employer, if during these six months found out that this uh, worker is not competent to perform his task, so the employer can return the domestic workers to the agency and he can get, and he's allowed to get another worker as where the agreement between the parties and uh, he shall not be pay any additional payment to the agency because during these six months, the employer has the right to return the employee if he is incompetent and he is allowed to get a new worker on the account of the agency without paying any additional fees. So in the next slide, we will talk about the working hours of the domestic workers. There is a huge difference between the working hours of the domestic work workers and the normal employees. The domestic workers, as per the Article 12 of the Cabinet decision issued on issued under the virtue of the Cabinet decision number 22 of 2019, the domestic workers shall have a rest time not less than 12. Hours. This means that the, in, the employer has a right to employ the worker for a maximum of 10 hours, uh, so, sorry, maximum of 12 hours. Unlike the comparing to the domestic to the labor law, the laborers can be placed on working hours up to eight and it can be extended up to nine hours for some special occupations. Aside from that, the domestic the labor, the labor, the employer, employee is obligated to work for maximum of eight hours as per the law. However, here in the work uh, workers law, they can be placed on working hour up to 12 months. months. Moving forward, we will see the annual leave and public holidays. Annual leaves and public holidays of the domestic workers are the same as the labor law. The domestic workers is entitled to every year, entitled to a 30 days paid leave. However, in case there is any public holidays or any sickness leave happen during the annual leave, it cannot be considered, uh, it cannot be added to the leave. So if case there is any public holiday happened during the leave, it can be considered as part of the annual leave of the worker. The worker also is entitled, as per the law, to a round ticket to his home country every two years. However, this one will be entitled to the worker in, in case he completed one year, of, uh, two years. If the worker does not complete two years, he will not be entitled to the round trip ticket. And in case the worker is stopped working for the same employer for no legal reasons, he will not also be entitled to the ticket to his home country. Moving forward, we will talk about the end of service gratuity. The end of service gratuity regulated by the law under the Article 26, which is saying that there is a mandatory restriction on the worker to be entitled to the end of service gratuity, which is he need to complete at least one year to be entitled to the end of services. 
If the worker does not complete the one year, he will not be entitled to the end of service creativity. Uh, however, the difference here between the end of service creativity of the domestic workers and uh, normal laborers is that the domestic workers are entitled to the end of service gratuity of 14 days, wages of the basic 14 days for each year of service. However, there in the labor law, the employees are entitled to a 21 days for each year. The end of service gratuity shall be deducted from the class from the worker and he will not be entitled to if he if he does not uh, if he does not continue the one year and if the uh, the worker stop working for for the employer for no legal reason he will not be entitled to the end of service gratuity In the next slide, we will move to see the litigation procedures and time bars of the domestic workers. Between this law came into force, the domestic workers used to go to the court, the court directly. However, as per this law, the domestic workers shall follow the same route and in case there is any dispute with the employer, they need to go firstly to the Ministry of Human Resources to file complaint there. Uh, the complaints as per the normal procedures of the Muhri, Minister of Human Resources, shall be uh, resolved within two weeks. If there is no resolution be between the parties, then the Ministry of Human Resources is entitled, uh, not entitled, they are obligated to transfer the dispute to the court within two weeks in case there is, any, there is no any settlement between the parties. So, as we have said, the competent court cannot accept any dispute by uh, domestic workers unless the domestic workers refer to the court by, by the Ministry of Human Resources. So, I guess this is the procedure taken to minimize the workload of the courts and trying to resolve the disputes as we have known that these disputes are Mostly are simple disputes and it can be resolved before going to the court. So saving the court's time and efforts, the Minister of Human Resources shall have the right to reach any settlement or decide on the obligations of each party before going to the court. If this is happened, then the case will be solved on the movery before going to the court and saves the court's time and efforts. Litigations, procedures, and time bar. Uh, this points has been covered by the law under Article 34 of the law, which says that court cases filed by the workers in accordance with the provision of this law are exempted from all court fees. Knowing that because these type of workers are getting less salaries and they are almost in needy, so the courts exempted all cases filed by the domestic workers from any court fees. And also, as per the law, there is a directions to the courts to, to, reach a, to reach a decision on this type of cases on a speedy way and prompt manner to avoid any delay happen to this type of workers which are as we have said, most of them are needy people and they cannot tolerate for a long time of the procedures and litigation time. However, the time bar of the domestic workers law as per the article number eight of the law is eight, uh, six months. Any rights conferred to the domestic workers according to the law shall be claimed within six months. If no, the domestic worker will have no right to claim the, his rights under this law based on the domestic workers law. However, there is a general provisions of employment contracts 
regulated by the Civil Transactions Law Number no. Five of 1985, in which the employer, the workers, in case there is the six months lapse, he can file a, a case before the court. Considering that, he will file the case based on the Civil Transactions Law, not the Domestic Workers Law, because the Civil Transactions Law allowed the workers to claim their rights in any employment contract during one year from the date of the termination of the contract. So, as per the Domestic Workers Law, the, the worker can claim his right up to six months from the date of the termination. However, if the six months is lapsed, he can claim his rights according to the tra civil transactions law within one year. If this one year lapse, I don't think there is any way for the workers to claim his rights if uh, he failed to do so within this one year. So that's it from my side on the domestic workers law. Now I guess we will move on to Annie to the Q&A session. Annie? Thank you, Mahmoud and Hassan for the presentation. Uh, we have now reached the Q&A segment of our webinar. And there are quite a few questions coming in, so we will aim our best to respond to as many of your queries as we can within the time frame for the Q&A section. So the first question, if I may pass it on to Mahmoud, which is, uh, if I signed a supplementary contract with my company, the terms of this contract will apply, or will the Ministry of uh, or the Ministry of Labor contract? Uh, thank you very much, Annie. Yes, it's 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 a good question. Uh, most of the the, the, the private sector company uh, have a, a side contract or, or or a supplementary contract to be signed between them and their employee. Uh, uh, here, uh, uh, the law is very clear. If the side contract of or the supplementary contract which signed by the, the, the company and between the company and their employee, uh, uh, giving them uh, more benefits uh, than uh, which is stipulated in the labor law, yes, we will apply the uh, uh, supplementary contract. Uh, but if this contract giving them less benefits, only the, the articles or the or the condition uh, uh, which mentioned to this list benefit shall be null and void. Article number, uh, uh, just a second. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's article number six or, or seven of the labor uh, contract. Is, it's stated clearly that any condition mentioned to any other contract shall give the, 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 uh, the employee uh, less benefits than which stipulated on the labor contract and the labor law, this condition shall be null and void. Hope it's clear. Thank you. Thank you, Mahmoud. Uh, we have another question and um, it says that is the employer um, allowed to employ the worker in another occupation that differs from the nature of his work. Maybe Hassan can take this one. Yes, Ani, thank you for the question, Ani. I actually this is happened a lot. There is so many dispute between the employers and the workers in this regard where the employ employers wants to transfer the worker from some occupation to another. So as per the law, this is not allowed to transfer the worker from his current occupation to another occupation unless the employer has a consent from the worker. This is the first condition. The employer should seek the consent of the worker to change his occupation from the current one to any another occupation. 
And there is another condition is that the new the new occupation should be listed also under the list of the occupation covered by the law. So aside from that, the employer will not be allowed to transfer the worker from his current occupation to another occupation. So in summary, the employer should seek the consent of the worker and the another the new occupation should be listed under the law. Uh, I mean, it should be one of the 19th occupations covered by the domestic workers law number 10 of 2017. I hope that's answered the question. Thank you, Hassan. Um, we've got another one in here uh, about uh, saying that I signed a limited term contract with my company. The contract did not mention any notice period. I would like to resign prior to the expiry date. So can I resign immediately? Mahmoud, maybe you could take this one. Uh, thank you, Annie. Uh, I think uh, we, we, we spoke about this condition in our webinar and uh, uh, of course, uh, if your contract did not mention to any probation period, uh, any uh, notes period, uh, the minimum notes period shall be applied, which is one month. So you cannot uh, uh, resign immediately and leave your uh, uh, company. Uh, you have to serve uh, 30 days uh, uh, notes uh, to your company and you should uh, work with them this period, which is 30 days, one month, and after that you can leave. But of course, uh, because your contract is limited uh, uh, period contract, uh, you have to pay a compensation to your company. This compensation will be uh, half of your salary for three months or your the, the, the salary uh, for the uh, uh, remaining period of your contract, uh, whatever is less between those uh, choices. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Mahmoud. Um, Another question that we have here is what are the obligations of the employer towards the domestic worker after the expiry of the contract? The obligations of the domestic work, the uh, domestic of the employer to other domestic workers are referred by the law under some articles. One of them is the end of service gratuity. The employer shall pay to the worker the end of service gratuity at the end of the contract. As per the law, the end of service gratuity shall be 14 days for each year, conditioning that the worker completed one year of work with the same employer. So, uh, the end of service gratuity calculated based on the basic wage of the worker based on 14 days for each year. However, the worker will not be entitled to this end of service gratuity if he stopped working for the employer for any illegal reasons. So in this case, he will be prohibited from the end of service gratuity. One more thing, at the end of the contract, also the employer will be obligated to provide the worker with a return ticket to his home country. However, this one will be will fall, will fall down if the worker uh, worked for any other, another employer. So in this case, if the worker does not want to go back to his home country and he found any other new job in the country, so in this case, he will not be entitled to the round, to the return ticket to his home country. So these are the obligations of the employer at the end of the contract. One, end of service gratuity and the return ticket to the home country of the worker. 
that's it, Annie. Let's move if there is any other question. Thank you, Hassan. Uh, we have uh, another question. Uh, it says here that one of our employees has a poor performance record since a long time and we want to terminate him. Is that a, a valid reason for termination to avoid the arbitrary termination compensation? Mahmoud, uh, maybe you could say, uh, take this one. Uh, thank you, Annie. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the arbitrary uh, uh, termination compensation is stipulated in the labor law, uh, and they say it's uh, up to the courts uh, according to uh, uh, different condition to grant the employee uh, from month to three months uh, uh, a compensation if uh, uh, the employer or the company terminated him without any valid reason. Um, uh, the reason for the termination uh, stipulated in the most important two articles in the labor law. Uh, article number uh, 120, as I think, and 121. 120 is stipulated the condition of terminating uh, 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 the employer, the employee, sorry, uh, uh, without uh, providing him with a, 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 a not period, without uh, the employee will be entitled to end of service gratuity. This condition is stipulated uh, specifically in this article, and uh, the poor performance is not one of these conditions. So. But here, uh, uh, the Ministry of Human Resources and Emeritization uh, uh, makes some regulations uh, 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 regarding uh, if your employee has a very bad or poor performance and you need to terminate him, how should you make this? And it would be a proper way or a valid reason for, termination, for terminating him without paying to him this compensation for the arbitrary dismissal. Uh, first thing uh, uh, you should send to your employee a uh, written legal uh, written notice uh, showing him your concern about his poor, poor performance in the previous uh, period. Then after that, you should invite him for a meeting. Uh, you should discuss with your employee the reason of his poor performance and uh, uh, let him uh, 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 clarify uh, maybe something uh, he needs. Maybe he needs some training uh, or courses or something to improve his performance. Uh, then you can give him approximately from 30 days, it's up to your employee, but at least 30 days to six uh, months, one month to six months to improve his performance. If he did not improve his performance during this uh, uh, period, you should send to him another final rating notice saying to him, according to our previous notes and our meeting and uh, uh, it's still your your performance did not be improved. So if your in, in, uh, performance did not improve within the 30 uh, uh, days, we are regret to inform you that we will terminate your contracts. At this condition, in this condition, yes, if you terminated him for the poor for the poor performance after. Uh, taking all these steps, yes, it will be valid reason for you to terminate him because you did uh, your best to help him and assist him to improve his performance, but he did not uh, 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 comply with this or did not success to improve his performance. So it will be a valid reason to terminate him without paying any compensation for the arbitrary business. Hope this is sufficient answer. I hope so. Yes, and
Thank you for that, Mahmoud. We have another one for Hassan coming in. As an employer, when can I terminate the worker's contract before the expiry date? If yes, what are my rights? Actually, this is a good question because there is us. There are so many inquiries on this regard. When the employers when want to the to contract to terminate the contract, if ca in case there is any dispute with the worker, as per the law, there are three reasons in which the employer will be entitled to terminate the contract. And as per the law, these three conditions are if in case the worker is healthy and fit to perform his tasks and in case there is the 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 worker refused to work for the employer in this case the employer will be entitled to terminate the contract and the third reason the uh, the employer can terminate the contract in case the worker found incompetent to perform his tasks because sometimes uh, as we have seen in many cases the workers just came to the UAE to gain some pay and some of them or sometimes the workers does not have the the competent skills to perform the tasks so in this case if the employer found the worker is incompetent does not have the enough skills to perform the task he came to the employer can return the the worker to the agency in this case the return ticket will be built by the recruitment office because as, as we have said in case of the end of the contract the employer should pay the return ticket to the home country of the uh, worker however in this case if the worker is unfit or, or if he does refuse to work for the worker or he is incompetent to perform his task in these cases the recruitment office will bear the cost of returning the worker to his home country and the recruitment office will be obligated also as per the law to provide the worker with a new worker to provide the employer with a new worker without any additional costs. So we are always advising the employers to keep copies of all contracts and invoices, whatever they have get to the recruitment of uh, agencies. They need to keep copies of it because in case there is any dispute, in case there is any returning of the worker to the agency, the worker the employer will be invited to claim a new worker on the cost of the recruitment office without paying any additional costs. Hope that answers the question. If you have any questions, Annie. Thank you, Mahmoud and Hassan, for answering all of those questions. We've arrived at the end of our Q&A segment, uh, as informed in the beginning of the webinar that due to the time constraints we might not be able to answer all of the questions but uh, all of the unanswered questions will be responded to so thank you everyone and please follow us on linkedin and twitter to stay updated with all of our new webinars and articles